In chapter ray optics we studied phenomenon such as refraction and reflection which proved ray nature of light that is light travels in a straight line In chapter wave optics we will study phenomenon such as polarization and diffraction which proves wave nature of light For a very long period of time it was not clear whether light shows wave nature or ray nature there was lot of debate going on between physicist later on it was proved that light has both ray as well as wave nature also that is what we'll be studying in our next chapter dual nature of in 1895 rongton discovered x rays and in 1897 jj thomson discovered electron electron discovery was very important because it helped us in understanding atomic structure william crookes perfooks performed an experiment in which a discharge tube was considered and and a two electrodes were kept inside discharge tube at low pressure about 0.001 mm of mercury a discharge took place between the two electrodes when electric field was applied fluorescent glow appeared on the glass opposite to the cathode depending on the glass used the glow color was different so for example soda glass gives us yellowish green glow william crookes later on called this as cathode rays and he said the nature or the charge of these rays is negative jj thomson continued the experiment by applying mutually perpendicular electric and magnetic field he found speed and specific charge of cathode rays which were later on called as electrons speed of the electron speed of the electron was found to be 0.1 to 0.2 times the speed of light in vacuum which is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second the specific charge was found to be 1.76 into the power of 11 coulombs per kg specific charge can be one mark question so let us define specific charge specific charge is the ratio of charge of an electron to mass of an electron as you can see we have substitute charge and mass value of an electron and calculate it but at that period of time charge and mass of the electron were unknown the only quantity which was known was specific charge or em ratio now uh, jj thomson changed the material which was used irrespective of the material specific charge value remained the same no matter which material he used em ratio was same or constant so he concluded that specific charge is a constant which is 1.76 into 10 to the power of 11 coulombs per kg then in 1913 millikens performed oil drop experiment so in this experiment oil is sprayed and electric field is applied so usually when we spray oil due to gravity it has a tendency to fall on the surface okay or get attracted towards the ground but when field was applied in the oil droplets instead of falling down it raised up so this is what is millikens oil drop experiment what was the conclusion of millikens oil drop experiment that the charge on each oil drop is is integral multiple of 1.602 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulomb which we know now is nothing but 
charge of an electron. Specific charge was known. Charge was known. So only mass was unknown. So later on, mass of an atom is considered an atom. Okay. We have nucleus and we have electrons revolving around the atom. Sorry, nucleus in the atom. Now we have electron say in K shell. If I give energy to this electron in K shell, it has tendency to jump to L shell. However, it cannot stay in L shell for a long time. So from L shell, it will jump back to K shell by giving out excessive energy. Okay. If I increase the energy applied to the electron in the K shell, it has tendency to jump to the M shell then it will jump back to K shell. Then again, if I increase the energy further, then it has tendency to jump to the N shell. Okay. So, what is happening over here is, as we are increasing the energy, the electron is jumping to higher orbitals. At one point, when we give energy, this electron can become a free electron. What is this free electron? Free electron means the electron will no longer be bound to the nucleus. Okay. So it can move anyhow, anywhere. Okay. So why are we discussing this concept? To understand work function much better. So we have understood the concept when a bound electron becomes a free electron. So, if we consider a metal surface and if there are free electrons, these free electrons have tendency to come out of the metal surface. Okay? Okay? Let us define work function from here. Work function, it is the minimum energy required by an electron to escape or to come out of the metal surface. The work function depends on the material. So depending on the property and the nature of the material, the work function will change. Okay. Now, usually work function is written in electron volts or EVV. One electron volt is nothing but 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. So, joules is unit of energy. Okay. So, we will define electron volt. One electron volt is the energy gained by an electron when it has been accelerated by a potential difference of one volt. Now, let us understand what is this work function. Let us consider there is a metal A having work function as 5.65 electron volts. Let us say there is an energy of incident light of about 2.14 electron volt. Now the question is will there be emission of electrons taking place or uh, will there be no emission of electron taking place? Now, if you see clearly, energy of incident light is lesser compared to work function. Whereas, or I can say, work function is greater than energy of incident light. But in this case, there won't be any emission taking place. Okay? Only if the energy of incident light is greater than work function, there is emission of electrons taking place. We cannot just randomly pull out the electrons as we wish. There are three methods of uh, taking the electron out of the metal surface or I can say there are three types of electron emissions. First is thermionic ionic emission. The process of emission of free electrons from the metal surface by heating is called as thermionic emission. 
so one common example what uh, i can give you is a uh, heating knife or any metal um, on gas stove okay so you can see that knife is turning red in color so when it is turning red in color their emission of electrons is taking place second type of electron emission is field emission the process of emission of free electrons from the metal surface by applying suitable electric field is called as field emission so we are applying electric field to the to the material here i have given you example of a light bulb okay so when we switch on the light there is an electric field or passing through the bulb so what will happen this in turn will heat the tungsten material which will give out emission this is a combination of field emission as well as thermionic emission because only field emission is very complicated example is electron microscopes okay so this is one of the simplest and best example i can give you for field and the third type of emission is photoelectric emission the process of emission of free electrons from the metal surface when light of suitable frequency is incident on it is called as photoelectric emission so in our chapter we'll be studying a lot about photoelectric emission and i'll explain you in detail what happens there but for time being just understand that when light of suitable frequency is falling on the metal surface it gives out electrons okay this single diagram has lot of concepts in it now for example see work function of potassium it's given to be two electron volts the energy of this incident red light is given to be 1.77 electron volts which is greater definitely the work function is greater in our case hence there is no emission of electrons taking place let us come to green light whose energy is 2.25 electron volts whereas work function of potassium is 2 electron volts which is greater the energy of incident light is greater hence you can see there is emission of electron taking place from the metal surface now let us come to our third case where we are using blue light the energy of blue light is 3.1 electron volt and the work function is 2 electron volt so definitely 3.1 electron volt is greater hence you can see the electrons being emitted okay now um this explains the concept that if the energy of the incident light is greater than the work function only then there is emission of electrons taking place now let us look at one more concept okay here you can i am comparing the energies of incident light here it is 2.25 electron volts and here it is 3.1 electron volts we know that kinetic energy is nothing but half mv square okay so energy kinetic energy is a form of energy and according to law of conservation of energy energy can neither be created nor be destroyed but can be converted from one form to another okay so that is why you can see when the energy is 2.25 electron volts okay the velocity or the speed of the emitted electron is 2.96 into 10 to the power of 5 meter per second when the energy is 3.1 electron volts you can see the speed is 6.22 into 10 to the power of 5 meters per second as the energy of incident light is increasing the energy uh, the velocity or the speed of the emitted electrons is also increasing so this concept is very clear now let us move on 
to another concept here if you see wavelength of three different lights are given okay wavelength of red is maximum and wavelength of blue is least okay we know relationship between wavelength and frequency okay wavelength is equal to c by frequency okay so c is nothing but speed of light in vacuum so if wavelength is maximum frequency will be minimum in our case red light has least frequency and blue light has most frequency okay highest frequency and red has least frequency because of the wavelength factor okay so now you can see that here for red light in this case there is no emission of electrons taking place whereas for green there is emission of electron taking place and there is blue for which emission of electron taking place so now if you see let me say frequency of red frequency of green frequency of blue okay frequency of red is lesser than green frequency of green is lesser than frequency of blue okay so this frequency for which there is emission of electron taking place is called as threshold frequency i repeat the minimum frequency below which there is no emission of electrons taking place is called as threshold frequency okay now wavelength frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional hence i can define threshold wavelength okay threshold wavelength is nothing but the maximum wavelength above which there is no emission of electrons taking place is called as threshold wavelength just opposite of frequency threshold frequency is represented as nu not okay so now you have understood the concept of threshold frequency the frequency above which there is emission of electrons taking place or the frequency below which there is no emission of electrons taking place so it is just like a cut off limit okay the entire process or phenomenon is called as photoelectric effect now let us just define photoelectric effect it is the phenomenon of emission of electrons from a metal surface when radiations of suitable frequency are incident on it okay the photoelectric effect was discovered by hendrich hertz so let us consider how hertz performed this experiment okay so hertz first considered an evacuated glass tube in which two metal plates were kept one plate was named as emitter plate and the second plate was called as collector plate plate as the name suggests emitter plate emits electrons when light of suitable frequency falls on it collector plate collects electrons whichever are emitted by the emitter plate so what did he observe he observed that when ultraviolet rays fall on the emitter plate the electrons present on the emitter plate come out of the emitter plate and move towards the collector plate when these electrons reach the collector plate or detector a loop intensity of the sparks enhanced or increased in 18th and 19th century two physicists holwatch and lenard investigated the phenomenon of photoelectric effect first let us study lenard's experiment 
so lenard observed that whenever uv light was falling on the emitter plate there was current flowing in the external circuit you can see in diagram whenever current is flowing in external circuit the light, light is or the bulb is glowing okay when uv light was stopped current flowing in the circuit stopped okay so what basically is happening is when uv light falls on emitter plate the electrons are being emitted from the emitter plate now these electrons will move towards collector plate and whenever they strike the collector plate there is flow of current okay now when there is no uv light falling on the emitter plate what happens there are no electrons being emitted hence there are no electrons being collected at the collector plate and therefore the bulb does not hall watch experiment hall watch connected a negatively charged zinc plate to electroscope electroscope is a device which detects the presence of electric charge on a body he, he observed that when uv light was made to fall on this zinc plate the negatively charged zinc plate became positive charged further when it was still radiated by uv light the positive charge zinc plate became more positive charged briefly hall watch observed that negatively charged zinc plate became positive charge and more positive charge when it was irradiated by uv light so uh, hall watch concluded that there are negative charges being emitted from the zinc plate that is why it is becoming positive and more experimental study of photoelectric effect can be a five mark question diagram and definition of photoelectric effect is important we already know the definition of photoelectric effect that is photoelectric effect is the phenomenon of emission of electron by metal surface when radiation of suitable frequency are incident on it before understanding the entire phenomenon of photoelectric effect let us try to understand the experimental setup of it first let me consider evacuated glass tube to understand this towards your left i have drawn two i have drawn two blue color boxes one as room and other as evacuated room so first let me take or consider example of room so you can imagine from wherever you are seated around you there are so many atoms or electrons present so that is what i have mentioned as a room if you see carefully there are around 17 to 20 yellow bubbles so these are electrons present around you and the red bubble what you see is the electron which is emitted from the emitter plate so now what happens this electron will go and hit the other electron that is red will go and hit the yellow electron so when they collide the energy is lost further it goes and collides with another electron so some more energy is lost so like that if the electron the electron goes on colliding with other electrons present within the chamber or tube it starts losing its energy and sometimes it may not reach the collector plate also it happens when it is in room condition second i have given you idea about evacuated room in this room you can see there are hardly four yellow circles or yellow bubbles which are uh, electrons present around you okay so whenever this electron goes and collides with them it loses its energy but uh, colliding with four electrons is different and colliding with 17 electrons is different so energy loss is more in 17 electrons compared to when it collides with four electrons 
now you can relate it with evacuated glass tube so in evacuated glass tube the number of elect electrons are less hence pressure is less okay so that whenever electrons are emitted from the emitter plate they don't collide within the tube and lose its energy and almost all the electrons whichever are emitted are collected at the collector plate i hope evacuated glass tube you have got a brief idea about it now second let us move on to collector plate collector plate is represented as a which means anode anode means negative terminal of the battery okay so as as we all know collector plate collects the emitted electrons okay next we have emitter plate emitter plate is represented as c in the diagram and it means cathode that means positive of the battery is connected to the terminal okay so emitter plate emits the electrons now what is the reason why are we keeping emitter plate positive and collector plate before understanding the entire phenomenon of photoelectric effect let us try to understand the experimental setup of it first let me consider evacuated glass tube to understand this towards your left i have drawn two i have drawn two blue color boxes one as room and other as evacuated room so first let me take or consider example of room so you can imagine from wherever you are seated around you there are so many atoms or electrons present so that is what i have mentioned as a room if you see carefully there are around 17 to 20 yellow bubbles so these are electrons present around you and the red bubble what you see is the electron which is emitted from the emitter plate so now what happens this electron will go and hit the other electron that is red will go and hit the yellow electron so when they collide the energy is lost further it goes and collides with another electron so some more energy is lost so like that if the electron the electron goes on colliding with other electrons present within the chamber or tube it starts losing its energy and sometimes it may not reach the collector plate also it happens when it is in room condition second i have given you idea about evacuated room in this room you can see there are hardly four yellow circles or yellow bubbles which are uh, electrons present around you okay so whenever this electron goes and collides with them it loses its energy but uh, colliding with four electrons is different and colliding with 17 electrons is different so energy loss is more in 17 electrons compared to when it collides with four electrons now you can relate it with evacuated glass tube so in evacuated glass tube the number of elect electrons are less hence pressure is less okay so that whenever electrons are emitted from the emitter plate they don't collide within the tube and lose its energy and almost all the electrons whichever are emitted are collected at the collector plate i hope evacuated glass tube you have got a brief idea about it now second let us move on to collector plate collector plate is represented as a which means anode anode means negative terminal of the battery okay so as as we all know collector plate collects the emitted electrons okay next we have emitter plate emitter plate is represented as c in the diagram and it means cathode that means positive of the battery is connected to the terminal okay so emitter plate emits the electron so now why do we call emitter plate as photosensitive plate because photosensitive 
means it is sensitive to light so whenever light of suitable frequency is falling on it it emits electrons so that is why the term photosensitive sensitive plate is also defined over here next let us understand about quartz window quartz is nothing but glass okay glass window allows light to pass through it okay light of suitable frequency s is nothing but source or monochromatic source monochromatic means single ray of light okay so here the source what we are using is uv light okay so we are using uv light for this entire photoelectric L. next electrons electrons as you know okay so when light of suitable frequency is falling there is emission of electrons taking place from a emitter plate now most of the places you will see term photoelectrons it's better you use term photoelectrons photoelectrons why because these are the electrons emitted because photons or light is falling on the material okay so that is why i am introducing that term from now onwards that is photoelectrons ones okay next battery battery has two terminals positive and negative battery maintains the potential difference between the two plates okay plate c the emitter plate can be kept positive first and then negative collector plate a can be kept negative first and then positive okay so how is this possible to change the polarity of the plates it is usually with the help of commutator okay commutator reverses the polarity of the plates so emitter plate if if it is initially positive then we can change it to negative with the help of commutator commutator can also be a one mark question what is a commutator or what is the use of commutator so answer is very simple commutator reverses the polarity of the plates next to microammeter ammeter is a device or apparatus used to measure the current flowing through the circuit okay so micro means it's 10 to the power of minus 6 okay that is the uh, that is the amount of current flowing through the so cute okay it's in the form of 10 power minus 6 now whenever electrons move or charges move it gives rise to current whenever photoelectrons move it gives rise to photo current so whenever you come across term for photo current please don't get confused photo current is sometimes called as photoelectric current okay next we have voltmeter voltmeter measures the voltage rheostat 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 can be used to change the resistance in the circuit so left hand corner you can see the diagram of rheostat uh, it is almost same similar to what you will be using in now let us understand the entire phenomenon of photoelectric effect so a source emits uv light the uv light falls on the emitter plate so whenever it is falling there is emission of electrons taking place these photo photoelectrons move towards collector okay collector plate collects it whenever the photoelectron is striking the collector plate there is a photo current flowing okay so in our first case we are keeping the emitter plate at negative and collector plate at positive why are we doing it what is the charge of an electron electron is negatively charged when emitter plate is kept a negative negative and negative like charges ripple so all the electrons emitted by the emitter plate are getting collected at the collector plate so 
the current flowing is called as photo current or photo electric current now with the help of commutator let us reverse the polarity of the plates that is let us keep emitter plate at positive and collector plate at negative now when light is falling on the emitter plate there are electrons being emitted as usual but what has happened to emitter plate emitter plate has become positive and what has happened to collector plate collector plate has become negative okay so in this case what happens most of the electron remain towards the emitter plate they don't go towards the collector plate maybe few electrons whichever has a uh, whichever has high energy very high energy they will somehow manage themselves to go towards the collector plate but most of the electrons will remain at emitter plate because emitter plate will be kept as positive and collector plate will be kept as negative so our experiment does not end over here let us understand how intensity potential and frequency affects the photoelectric current first let us begin with intensity of light versus the photoelectric current before starting um, with the, uh, the detailed study let us understand what is intensity so if i say intensity of the incident light increases that means the number of photons are increasing okay so say for example incident light has 10 photons okay and say the intensity is 10 now if i say intensity has increased and become 100 that means incident light has 100 photons per unit time okay so this is what intensity means so first let us plot a graph of intensity versus photoelectric current so it was observed that as intensity increases the photoelectric current also increased so intensity and photoelectric current are directly proportional to each other or i i can say photo electrons emitted per second is directly proportional to intensity okay let us say photoelectric current is present in y axis and we have collector plate potential in our x plus x axis and a retarding potential in our minus x axis so what is this collector plate potential and what is this retarding potential i'll explain you now collector plate potential is when the collector plate is kept positive and the emitter plate is kept negative okay so this is our emitter plate and this is our collector plate so emitter plate we had represented as c and collector plate we had represented as a in our diagram so this is positive and this is neg as uh, negative okay sorry this is negative and this is positive okay now what is happening when light rays are incident on the photosensitive material there are photo electrons being produced or there are electrons being released from the material now say there are 20 electrons which are released okay here assume only 15 electrons are reaching remaining 5 electrons are somewhere over here okay so now what has happened at collector plate only 15 has reached but in emitter plate there are 20 electrons which are generated so a photo current flows through the circuit so a current is flowing through the circuit then what happens let me say i increase the potential of collector plate i make it more positive then if there are 20 electrons liberated or emitted here say there are 17 electrons which are reaching the collector plate so there will be increase in photoelectric current so now say i further increase the potential so then 
there are there is further increase in photoelectric current at one point what happens let me say i have kept my collector plate potential at maximum how many electrons are liberated 20 electrons how many are getting collected 20 electrons are getting collected so i get a maximum if i increase this further there won't be any change it will remain constant because as the number of electrons being emitted all the number of electrons are getting collected okay so what i mean is that the total number of electrons emitted at the emitter plate will be equal to total number of electrons collected at the collector plate beyond this point if you keep on increasing the potential also it does not matter the current remains constant because the number of electrons are maximum this current is called as saturation current okay now let us study the second scenario retarding potential it is a case when collector plate is kept negative and emitter plate is kept positive so what is happening we have our emitter plate which is represented as C and we have our collector plate which is represented as A. So this is positive and this is negative. Electrons are emitted when light of suitable frequency is falling on it. So negative and negative. So like charges at, uh, repel and unlike charges attract. Okay. So electrons have tendency to remain over here. However, few electrons which has greater energy will go or move towards the collector plate. So again, let me say there are 20 electrons emitted. There might be only 2 electrons reaching the collector plate. Remaining 18 electrons might be present near the emitter plate itself. So, the collector plate is negative potential and hence only two electrons are reaching say only if i increase the negative potential over here say 19 electrons will remain over here and one electron only reaches the collector plate so if i make it more negative the number of electrons has decreased and hence my current also photoelectric current has also decreased say if i increase further the negative potential of the collector plate okay then all electrons will remain at the emitter end itself so how many electrons will reach collector plate zero so will there be any flow of current no there won't be any flow of current so Hence, zero electrons reach the collector plate. Okay, so if the uh, if there are zero electrons reaching the collector plate, that means there is no photoelectric current flowing. Here you can see there is some potential, but the current has become zero. Okay, the photoelectric current has become zero. So this potential is called as stopping potential. It is represented as capital V with a suffix not. Okay. So we can define stopping potential as minimum negative potential given to the collector plate for which photoelectric current becomes zero. Okay, this is called as stopping potential. It is one of the important definition. Say I am keeping the intensity of light as I1. Okay, I am keeping some constant intensity of light I1 this is the same diagram what i have taken from textbook okay so here we have discussed about this intensity i1 part now this is our saturation current now if i increase the intensity then you can see the saturation current is increasing but what happens to stopping potential stopping potential remains same if i increase the intensity as i3 the stopping potential remains same 
but the saturation current has increased okay so we can conclude that the saturation current depends on intensity but stopping potential does not depend on intensity now let us try to understand how frequency of incident radiation affects the stopping potential okay we uh, along x axis we have collector plate potential along negative x axis we have retarding potential and along y axis we have photoelectric current we have discussed this in earlier graph also so what are we doing over here we are keeping the intensity constant okay and then we are changing the frequency so you can see new one that is frequency one new two frequency two and new three frequency three a graph was plotted and from the graph we can observe that as frequency changes what happens to saturation current it remains same but what happens to stopping potential these all are stopping potential 1 2 and 3 stopping potential changes okay from here we can say that the frequency is independent or sorry saturation current is independent of frequency whereas stopping potential depends on frequency in our graph we had seen that stopping potential depends on frequency but how does the stopping potential depend on frequency let us plot a graph of stopping potential versus the frequency of the incident light let us consider some metal A. It was seen that up to a certain frequency called threshold frequency. Let me write this as mu naught. Okay. Threshold frequency, there was no change in stopping potential. That is, the stopping potential remained zero. But after threshold frequency, the stopping potential increased linearly with an increase in frequency stopping potential i'll write it as capital v naught okay so above threshold frequency the photoelectric effect was taking place hence stopping potential also increased linearly with frequency now let us consider another metal metal b okay so again here up to a certain frequency called threshold frequency of that material i'll write it as mu naught dash okay there was no change in stopping potential but after the threshold frequency for metal b there was a increase in stopping potential with respect to frequency in both the cases you can see frequency versus stopping potential is directly proportional or linear graph okay so we can draw two conclusions from this graph that is the stopping potential the stopping potential varies linearly with the frequency of the incident radiation the second conclusion is that or second observation is that below threshold frequency there is no emission of photoelectrons taking place or there is no photoelectric effect or the stopping potential becomes zero so observing this graph we can draw two conclusion first the maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons varies linearly with frequency of incident radiation that is maximum kinetic energy is directly proportional to frequency but maximum kinetic energy does not depend on intensity of the incident light this is our first conclusion the second conclusion is that below threshold frequency photoelectric effect is not possible no matter how large the intensity is now let us discuss about the conclusions of photoelectric effect first this is a graph which we have already studied 
okay from this graph we can see that for a given photosensitive material and above threshold frequency the photoelectric current is directly proportional to intensity of the incident light second conclusion for a given photosensitive material saturation current depends on intensity and stopping potential depends on frequency so from second diagram or second graph you can see as intensity is increasing saturation current is increasing but in diagram 1 you can see stopping potential increases with increase in frequency third conclusion is from our fourth graph that is for a photosensitive material there exists a cut off frequency below which there is no photoelectric effect taking place that is what is the definition of threshold frequency right frequency right and above which uh, stopping potential increases linearly with frequency this is the third observation or conclusion fourth conclusion is that kinetic energy of photo electron increases linearly with frequency last conclusion the photoelectric effect is an instantaneous phenomena that is there is no time lag as soon as the light falls on it on the photosensitive material there is emission of photoelectrons taking place